uh let's quickly jump into the lands we've done all of the single colors we've done all of the multicolored. definitely if you're watching this on youtube later check the description below for links to all of the other videos going over all the cards in phyrexia all will be one we're on to lands and artifacts now this is our final folder final two folders of phyrexia all will be one previews this is the whole set uh it's pretty crazy so far so definitely go back and check it out um let's jump into the lands the first one we have is the autonomous furnace this is the land sphere there's a new uh set of lands called spheres in this uh set so excited to see if there's anything that deals with spheres um the autonomous furnace enters the battlefield tapped you can tap it to add red mana or you can tap pay one and a red to sacrifice it and draw a card not bad then we've got black cleave cliffs uh enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands so this is the fast duels uh this is the black red fast duel uh copper line gorge is the uh, red uh, green fast duel dark slick shores is the blue black fast duel land then we've got the dross pits which is the black sphere uh it looks like this has the exact same sacrifice ability as the other sphere the fair basilica is the white sphere and the hunter's maze is the green sphere with the draw card sacrifice ability mirex is a colorless sphere you can tap it to add one mana of any color activate only if mirex entered the battlefield this turn you can pay three tap it create a one one colorless phyrexian might artifact creature token with toxic one and this creature can't block so mirex spits out uh mites which is really cool if you're building that synergy next up we've got the monumental facade uh enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it you can tap it to add one colorless or tap it to remove an oil counter from it put an oil counter on target artifact or creature you control activate only as a sorcery so this is really neat it's a land that kind of has extra synergies with other things uh we've seen a lot of cards that care about oil counters or you know you know cards that want to use its oil counters uh for special really cool things so instead of proliferating you can remove an oil counter from the facade and you know give it to something else very very cool uh then we've got the microsynth gardens uh, you tap it to add a colorless, or you can pay one to tap it to add a mana of any color, so it filters mana. Or you can pay X, tap it, and it becomes a copy of target non-token artifact you control with mana value X. Uh, so Microsynth Gardens can become a non-token artifact you control. Very cool. Then we've got Razor Verge Thicket, which is the uh, green-white fast dual land. We've got Sea Chrome Coast, which is the white blue fast dual land. We've got the Seed Core. Uh, the Seed Core says tap it to add colorless or tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast Phyrexian creature spells. Then, if you meet the corrupted requirements, you can tap it to uh, tap the seed core target one one creature gets plus two plus one until end of turn activate only if opponent has three or more poison counters then we've got the surgical bay which is the blue version of the sacrifice uh spheres and finally we have terramorphic expanse which is sacrifice terramorphic expanse search your library for a basic land card put it onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle uh, and that's it for the lands pretty cool stuff in there i like some of the synergies uh let's jump into the colorless cards uh first up we have argenta masticore five colorless for a five five phyrexian manticore with first strike and protection from multicolored at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice argenta multi masticore unless you discard a card when you discard a card this way, destroy target non-land permanent an opponent controls with mana value less than 
or equal to the mana value of the discarded card. So this is really cool. It makes you care about what card you're discarding at the beginning of your upkeep. I really like that. Uh, then we've got Ex Atraxa's Skitterfang. Three colorless for a 2-2 two -two Phyrexian Insect artifact creature. Atraxa's Skitterfang enters the battlefield with three oil counters on it. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may remove an oil counter from Atraxa's Skitterfang. When you do... Um, target creature you control gains your choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or lifelink until end of turn. That's very neat. And you get three opportunities to do that out the gate. And then if you proliferate or put more, more oil counters on it some other way, um, you can do that more. You could probably do that the whole game if you have enough proliferation. Um... Then we've got Basilica Skull Bomb, which is one colorless mana for an artifact. Pay one, sacrifice Skull Bomb, draw a card. Or pay two and a white to sacrifice Skull Bomb, target creature you control, gains plus two, plus two, and gains flying until end of turn, draw a card, activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. Then we've got Dross Skull Bomb, so I'm assuming there's going to be a Skull Bomb for each layer of Phyrexia. So Dross Skull Bomb says one, is one colorless mana for an artifact. Um, much like the other Skull Bomb, it's you pay one, sacrifice it, draw a card. Or you pay two and a black, sacrifice it, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and draw a card, activate as a sorcery. Uh, those skull, the Skull Bombs are good. I like them. I think the black one is better than the white one. Um, but I like that even if you do the expensive sacrifice you still get to draw that card uh, next up we've got dune mover for two colorless you get a 2-1 phyrexian golem artifact creature with toxic one when dune mover enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card reveal it then shuffle and put that card on top interesting i like that it's okay artifact synergies for sure um, again, these cards are all in alphabetical order. That's how Wizards of the Coast numbers their sets. Um, so we will get to the other Skull Bombs in a minute. It just depends on what the name, the first letter of the card name is. Next up, we've got the Filigree Scott Silex. So this is um, the remake of the Silex. So Teferi goes back in time in the Brothers War, finds out that it was the Silex that destroyed... Um, oh, now I can't remember the name of the town, the city. Um, so Karn had a Silex in Brothers War, and um, one of the brothers, the my brain is just all over the place right now. One of the brothers uses the Silex to destroy, um, Urza uses the Silex to destroy Mishra's army of Phyrexian creatures um and it destroys everything it destroys all the people the whole town everything teferi in the last set went back in time to find out how urza stopped the phyrexians so now that we're in present day he gave the go ahead to create another silex um and this is the new silex that we're going to try to use in the story to destroy phyrexia and stop them from invading the rest of the planes of existence so the filigree silex is two colorless mana for a legendary artifact you can tap it to put an oil counter on it you can tap it to sacrifice it destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of oil counters on filigree silex or tap it to remove 10 oil counters from among permanents you control and sacrifice it it deals 10 damage to any target so again it cares about oil counters um i like that you can remove 10 oil counters from among all permanents you control so it's not just removing 10 oil counters from the silex um i think that's really cool next up we've got the furnace skull bomb so another skull bomb uh one colorless for an artifact sacrifice it to draw a card or you pay one and a red to sacrifice it put two oil counters on target artifact or creature you control and draw a card so you could sacrifice the Furnace Skull Bomb to put two oil counters on the Silex, make it more powerful. 
Uh, next up, we've got Graz, the Unstoppable Juggernaut. For eight colorless, you get a 7-5 legendary ar artifact creature Juggernaut. Juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. And other creatures you control have base power, toughness, 5-3, and are Juggernauts in addition to the other creature types. So this turns everything into a Juggernaut. Uh, and then everything you have can't be blocked by walls, and everything you have has to attack each combat if able. This is the most aggressive artifact creature I've ever seen in my life. Uh, next up, we've got Icker Plate Golem, three colorless for a 2 3 Phyrexian Golem. Um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it has one or more oil counters on it, uh, put an oil counter on it. Creatures you control with oil counters on them get plus one, plus one. So that doesn't scale, but it is cool that you can put an oil counter on something. Uh, then we've got the Hunter, Huntsman's Maze Skull Bomb. For one colorless, you get an artifact. You can pay one, sacrifice it, draw a card, or pay two and a green, sacrifice it. Target creature you control gets plus three, plus three, and trample until end of turn, and draw a card. Activate only as a sorcery. So that's a pretty good skull bomb. I still think the... What was it? The black one? The black one is the best. Um, yeah. Next up, we've got Mirin Safe House. For three colorless, you get an artifact. As long as Mirin Safe House is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all land cards in all graveyards. Wow. Interesting. I feel like someone way smarter than me is going to figure out a way to make this very powerful. Um, it's not me, though. Immediately, I have no thoughts of how this could be really powerful, but it does sound like something that could be very powerful. Next up, we've got Monument to Perfection. Um, this is two colorless for an artifact. You can pay three, tap it, search your library for a basic sphere or locust land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Pay three, Monument to Perfection becomes a 9 9 Phyrexian construct artifact creature, loses all abilities, and gains indestructible and toxic nine. What the F? Activate only if there are nine or more lands with different names among the basic sphere and locust lands you control. Wow. Activate only if there are nine or more lands with different names among basic sphere and locust lands you control. So you need to find a way to put as many differently named lands in your deck as possible. And then this is a 5-mana 9-9 nine, nine with Toxic 9 and Indestructible. That seems super powerful. Um, next up, we've got Mirror Convert. 2 colorless for a 2-1 Phyrexian Mirror with Toxic 1. You can tap it, pay 2 life, add 1 mana of any color. That's okay. It's not great. Uh, then we've got, oh, these are all going to be mirrors because we're at the M part of the alphabet. Mirror Custodian is three colorless for a 2-3 mirror. When Mirror Custodian enters the battlefield, scry two. Then each opponent may scry one. Oh, that's nice. Just handing out scries. Um, then we've got Mirror Kinsmith. Four colorless for a 3-1 mirror. When Mirror Kinsmith enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a mirror card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Interesting, but not scary. Uh, then we've got Phyrexian Atlas. For three colorless, you get an artifact that taps to add one mana of any color. It has corrupted. Whenever Phyrexian Atlas becomes tapped, each opponent who has three or more poison counters loses one life. Interesting. That's actually pretty neat. Um, I don't. It's not fantastic, but I think that. Uh, you know, as Commander sees a bunch of this Infect and Poison Counter stuff, I think this is very playable in Commander uh, for as a Mana Rock. Um, I don't think it's going to be very viable in Constructed or Limited. 
unless you're specifically building an artifact affinity list um i think there's just better ways to get mana of any color next up we've got prophetic prism reprint i believe uh, for two colorless you get an artifact when prophetic prism enters the battlefield draw a card then you can tap pay one tap it to filter mana into any color you need Next up, we've got Prosthetic Injector for one colorless. You get an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus O, plus two, and has toxic one, and the equip cost is one. This is great. I think this is great value. One mana to cast, one mana to equip. If you're playing that Boros equipment deck, um, this is a pretty good include. You want to give things toxic. Uh, then we've got Rib Skiff. This is cool. Look at that. It's like a living boat. Four colorless for a 4-4 vehicle with Toxic 2. When Rib Skiff enters the battlefield, draw a card, and it has Crew of 3. So the Crew to Damage ratio is not great, but it also has Toxic 2, so you're not necessarily concerned about doing the 4 damage, more so the 2 Toxic. Um, I think that's really cool. And the art is insane. Next up, we've got Soulless Jailer. Look at this chunky boy. Oh, there's people inside of them. Uh, for two colorless, you get an 04 Phyrexian Golem. Permanent cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Damn. And players can't cast non-creature spells from graveyard or exile. So it shuts off flashback or any graveyard synergy, really. It, it it shuts off all of the graveyard to the battlefield stuff. You can still take stuff from graveyard to hand. Uh, next up, we've got Staff of Completion. Completion. For three colorless, you get an artifact. Uh, this is kind of like Staff of Domination. Um, tap it, pay one life, destroy target permanent you own. Wait, what? why would you want to do that? You have to pay one life and destroy a permanent you own? Uh, oh, probably because you can, like, steal something. Tap it, pay two life, add one mana of any color. Tap it, pay three life, and proliferate. Tap it, pay four life, draw a card. Five, pay five, untap staff of completion. I feel like that's not good. But I don't know. I don't play self-sacrifice stuff very often. Two life for one mana of any color is good. Three life to proliferate. I don't know if that's good. Four life to draw a card is not, I don't think is good. Um, this may just be a commander staple um, and not playable in constructed or limited formats, uh, but we'll see. Next up, we've got surgical skull bomb. So this is the blue layer skull bomb. So one colorless for an artifact, pay one, sacrifice it, draw a card, or you can pay two and one blue to sacrifice it, return target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card. Uh, next up, we've got Sword of Forge and Frontier. So we got a, finally a new dual sword. Um, it's been a while since we've gotten a new one. Uh, this one is three. This one's red and green, so it's gruel. Uh, three uh, colorless for an equipment artifact. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and green. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. Damn, equipped cost is two. So I think if you're playing that Boros equipment deck, this is pretty good. Uh, and the rounding out our artifacts is the Tablet of Completion, Completion, uh, two colorless for an artifact, tap it to put an oil counter on Tablet of Completion, uh, tap it to add colorless mana, activate only if Tablet of Completion has two or more oil counters on it, and then you can pay one, tap it to draw a card, activate if Tablet of Completion has five or more oil counters on it. 
So you do have to do a bit of work to get the oil counters up there. Um, but you play this on turn two. And by turn seven, you're paying one to draw a card. That's not bad. It's definitely more of an artifact synergy slash commander card. Um, but it's pretty good. And then last but not least, we've got the Zenith Chronicler. For two colorless mana, you get a 3-1 Phyrexian Construct artifact creature with whenever a player casts their first multicolor spell each turn, each other player draws a card. Very interesting. I think there's some cool... This Monument to Perfection seems like it could be really busted in the wrong hands. The entire cycle of skull bombs is very cool uh um this aggro ass juggernaut is very cool yeah i think there's some neat artifacts in here some equipment stuff for that equipment deck that i'm telling you is going to be spicy i promise you boros equipment is going to be spicy in this set um 